Come on, boy, or it'll be too late. 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 Come on, boy, or it'll be too late.
about hey oh emily sorry my dear i must have fallen asleep that's enough napping for today tell me the rest of the story yes uh, of course that was our promise wasn't it before i continue on though i've got a little gift i want to give you wow it's pretty consider it a protective charm like a signpost it will help to lead you through your life a signpost one day my dear you will find out one of the truths of this world that the world is filled with contradiction and inequality when that day comes how will you respond what do you do that will be the instant that determines the value of your life this pendant will show you the way in that moment the value of my life yes dear the value of your life i have faith that you will grow up into a woman who can make the right choices do you understand emily We come toward the climax. As the angel said, I was soon fated to meet him. What do you think of those dreams, Zack? So I do care for Emily. What about you? We should take this opportunity and talk about this a bit. If I hadn't seen your come into the bar, well, you wouldn't have found this place, would you? Now, how about that? I guess I've always been lucky when luck was needed. That's why I've been able to stay in business, too. Although we have Willie to thank for finding this room, I suppose. He's got a great nose. Clever, too. He'd be a great businessman if he wanted to be. I owed you guys one anyway. And I owed York big time, too. You guys didn't tell anyone about that whole thing with Diane. I want to help you guys out. Is there anything I can do? Kaysen, I appreciate the offer. But this is a police matter. You can leave everything to us from here. Oh, well, okay. George, look. These cigarettes, they're the same brand that York smokes. He's definitely been here. Carol's been missing since the bar closed last night. This town will be deserted if this keeps up. What do you think is really happening here in Greenvale? Emily, let's focus on looking for York. I just hope there are more leads than a cigarette butt around here. Hey, Willie, of course! You can track his scent, can't you, boy? What do you think, officers? Let him help you out, why don't you? Oh, he'd make a fine police dog. I told you, we don't need... Sounds good, Kaysen. We need all the help we can get. Come on, George. Let's let them help us. But they are civilians. Do you have a better plan? As we speak, York might be... Ugh. Right. Let's have them help. Thank you, George. But one thing. With York missing in action, I'm back in charge. And York would give me hell if something bad happened to you guys. So promise me you'll call for backup at the first sign of danger. Yes, of course. If 
think we're missing something here. So I'm going to look around a bit longer. You go with Kaysen and follow York's trail. Thank you, George. We're counting on you, boy. Welcome to the force, Deputy Willie. Let's get rolling, then. Okay. I'm counting on you, Willie. Oh, not counting on me, though, are you? Sheesh. Hey, where are you going? Deputy Willie, he's over here. Come on, hurry! Hey, where are you going? Deputy Willie, he's over here. Come on, hurry! He can be a little selfish, but he's a good dog. He stayed with me all this time, through all the good and the bad. How long have you been together? Oh, we go back a long time. I can't even remember a time when he wasn't around. I had a dog when I was small, too. He was a beagle, so we named him Bee. <laughs> Stupid name, I know. He hated being left alone and always followed me around. I could tell him anything, even things I couldn't tell my parents. He'd look into my eyes and listen intently to anything I had to say. It's like he sympathized, and he didn't make fun of me. He would just listen. When I was done talking, he'd put a paw on my thigh. My worries just faded away when he did that. It made me feel like I was just a fool for worrying so much. <laughs> Dogs are great that way. Oh, yeah. Sometimes I think they got a lot more wisdom than us humans, even if they are betrayed. Well, they don't see it that way. Sure sounds foolish, but you know dogs, why they're always happy. I'm positive that even if man perishes off the face of the earth, dogs, why they'll just carry on regardless. They see everything, you know. From their dog houses, they look out and they see what humans do. Kaysen. 
Oh, look, Deputy Willie's calling for us. He's always like that. Let's get back to the chase. Thomas, I know that you're there. Your disposition is not of my concern. But you do need to stop this. Untie me. Let me go. Right now. And you and Carol should take off. Go as far away as you can. Open a bar or a diner in a new town. With your cooking, I know you'd do well. Why, thank you, York. You're so kind. Unlike him, if I had someone like you, things may not have come to this. York, have you ever been in love with someone? Thomas, a long time ago, I witnessed two people that I really cared about die. Both pretty much at the same time. And since then, I've tried not to care about anyone so deeply. But recently, that way of thinking has changed. Emily, right? She's a nice girl. But I must warn you, York. You'd be better off not falling in love with her. Thomas, considering the circumstances, whatever I say might not be important to you, but I'll say it anyways. Don't you dare touch Emily. York, I think I've said too much. It's natural to respond when someone talks to you, I guess. Everything will end tonight. You just stay there until then. What's wrong? Something's bothering you. Oh no, it's just... I promised to have tea with, with Polly. I just remember. What's that got to do with anything? Yep, you're right. This just isn't the time, I know. But it's... Well, she reminds me of my mother who passed away. Kaysen. I've been a salesman for a long, long time. I never had time to talk with my mother, you know. Sales, they were the thing for me. No matter what happened, this was more important. So, even when she was sick, I put more energy into my work, which I regret now. And you know, when I heard she died, I was... I was on my way home, all happy. I closed a big deal in Jersey. Just when you want to give something back, you got no one to give it back to. Well, that, that's when I met her, Polly. I thought heaven had given me another chance. I really did. So I always stay in that hotel whenever I come up here. Oh, sure, the rooms are great, but, but in all honesty, I go there because I want to talk with Polly. Does Polly know all this? No, no way. I'd never say anything so embarrassing to her. She'd think I've got some crazy mother complex or something. Right, let's get going. 
Deputy Willie disapproves of any chit-chat. I'll make it up to Polly some other time, I guess. Zach, I'm hungry, but I can't do much about that at the moment. Thomas is certainly a great cook. It's a shame to keep his cooking hidden out here in the countryside. Don't you think so, Zach? Ugh. Which reminds me, there's another great cook in town. To fall in love with her would mean that I would need to love her cooking, too. Why does God test us so, I wonder? That coffee she made. <laughs> Man, did that pack a punch. I wish you could have tasted it, Zach. It's only a hunch now, but I don't think Nick killed Diane. What do you mean? Me and Diane, we were, you know, pretty close. I'm sure some people might have moral issues about it all, but I'd like to think that I knew her pretty well. Every time we, we finished talking, she'd bring up art. I'd make a face, you know, boring. And she'd always say, you're so different from Nick. He's so much more intelligent. Sounds like something she'd say. Nick was one of the few people who she could talk to, you know. And vice versa for Nick, I suppose. Diane also told me that she was best friends with Nick. He'd have nothing at all to gain by killing her. I can't believe that one would try to kill the other. I just can't. But even the best of friends can end up in the worst fights. Still, the voices and footsteps I heard that night, they were something else, much more violent, more, more horrifying. Diane's voice sounded different too. Different, hard to explain. Of course, I, I couldn't make out what she was saying. You told York all this? Of course I did. What did he say? I, I know, that's fine. Something like that. <laughs> Let's go then and catch Diane's killer.
Hey, where are you going? Deputy Willie, he's over here. Come on, hurry! Hey, where are you going? Deputy Willie, he's over here. Come on, hurry! Are you close to the Ingrams? No. I mean, well, I always say hi when I see them at their store. Don't you think they make a wonderful family? I guess so. Including Jim, I suppose they do. <laughs> Indeed they do. The ideal family, I'd say. You know that I look after Isaac and Isaiah pretty often, right? They talk a lot when I take them out. Yesterday, Mama and Papa, <laughs> and this morning, Grandpa. Always about their family. Just listening to them makes me feel so happy. I don't have any brothers, you know. Maybe I'm a little jealous of those two. That's why when I come here, I always pay them a visit. Greenvale is really like a second home to me. I can tell. Deputy Willie's calling again. Enough about me. Let's get going. For some reason in the darkness, I see Emily's face. When I first met her on the bridge, she looked so dignified. And that glimmer in her eyes when she argues every word I say, her blonde hair lit by the dawn, heating steak at the diner, giving me directions in the car, the horror on her face in the gallery, and that coffee she made. She's a goddess in a tight dress. Zach, let's pray that she doesn't become a real goddess. Willie, York is nearby? Good job, Willie. Can we stop running now, please?
Hey, so we took the long route here. You weren't playing with us, were you? George, we found out where York is. George? George! <sighs> Kason, I'm going in alone. Hey, hey, you didn't forget what George said. No, I haven't. And that's why you get to stay out here and keep trying to contact him. I'm just going to check things out. I'll stay out of danger. Trust me. Okay, if you say so. I'll take care of this here. York, Emily is here. Time to say goodbye then. Thomas, let me tell you one more time. It's not too late. I can help you. Just untie me and let me go. If you don't, the situation will be irreversible, unfixable. York, no situation is reversible. Didn't you know that? Everyone, everything proceeds along a path preordained by fate. Goodbye, then. I wonder who'll be the next person to open this door. Well, whoever that person is will be the one to decide your fate. Zack, what was I supposed to say? All I can do now is wait. <laughs> 